Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are looking at ratio word problems today. So we are going to talk about cross-multiplying ratios, solving equivalent ratios, and then unit rate questions, which can appear in lots of different ways. But we'll talk about that as we go through um, this lesson. First off, cross-multiplying. Cross-multiplying is a way to determine if fractions are equivalent. Here's an example of how cross-multiplying works. You would take the numbers that are across from each other or on diagonals from each other and multiply them. 6 times 25 is 150, and 30 times 5 is 150. If the numbers across from each other are equal when you multiply them, like 150, 150, then these are equivalent fractions. That's one way to tell if fractions are equivalent is using cross-multiplying. So go ahead and use cross-multiplying to determine if these fractions are equivalent. You do 12 times 6, you get 72. 8 times 9, whoops, is also 72. So if you get the same number on both by doing both of the cross multiplying, then the equivalent, the ratios are equivalent. Let's take a look at this one. Pause the recording, try and do that. Use cross multiplying to determine if they are equivalent. Okay, 9 times 3 is 27, and 4 times 8 is 32. So these numbers, 32 and 27, are not equal to each other. Therefore, these are not equivalent fractions or equivalent ratios. All right. So that's one way to determine if ratios are equivalent, All right, is to just do some simple cross-multiplying. There is another way or another um, thing that you might be asked to do with ratios, equivalent ratios, and that is to simplify a ratio. Simplifying a ratio is another way of saying simplifying a fraction. What you will do is find the greatest common factor and then divide the top and bottom of the fraction by the greatest common factor. So the factors of 9 are 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. The factors of are 12 are 1 times 12 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. The common factor is 3. So you divide the top and bottom by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So simplifying ratios is just another way of saying simplifying fractions. So if you're asked to make a ratio in lowest terms or simplest form, basically you're just simplifying a fraction. Find the greatest common factor divide the top and bottom by that greatest common factor. If you need an additional review on how to do that, um, there is a whole video that I made on just simplifying fractions. But this video is more about um, ratio word problems, so that's kind of a prerequisite skill. Um, but again, you can watch the video on that, it's pretty short. All right, next thing, solving ratio problems. Here's a, a word problem. The ratio of boys to girls in a classroom is five to four. If we have 10 boys in the class, how many girls are in the class? This is a pretty standard type of ratio problem. Basically what they're doing is they're giving you a ratio, boys to girls. They give you one ratio, five to four, five boys, four girls. And then they say, there are actually 10 boys, how many girls are there? So you're setting up the ratio. The key to getting this type of ratio question correct is making sure you put boys on the top, girls on the bottom um, of the fraction. Five boys, four girls. Ten boys, how many girls? All right. If you set it up correctly, every single time you'll follow the same steps, you'll get the right, the same answer or the correct answer. Here are the steps. What you do is you cross multiply the numbers that are diagonal to each other. So we look for the numbers that are diagonal. We have three numbers here, 5, 10, and 4. There's only going to be one set that's diagonal of each other, and then there's our one unknown value. You multiply the numbers that are diagonal, and then you divide by the number that's left. So 4 times 10 gives us 40, and then we divide by the number that's left. So 4 times 10 gives us 40, and we divide by 5, which is the number that we have left. The answer, 8, is going to be our unknown value. 
All right, so 5 over 4 is equal to 10 over 8. Now, you might have also looked at that and said 5 times 2 is 10, 4 times 2 is 8, and figured it out that way, and that's fine. But some instances, you won't be able to just look at it and solve. But if you use this cross-multiplying method of multiplying the numbers that are on diagonal, dividing by the number that's left over, you will always, always, always be able to solve, no matter what the numbers are. Now we come to our last type of question, and that is a unit rate question. Um, with unit rate questions, you're finding the cost for one item. So here's an example. If I buy a pack of five calculators for $62.50, how much does each calculator cost? So I can set this up as equivalent ratios, my cost over my calculators, $62.50 over five calculators, is equal to the cost over one calculator. See, I'm doing this problem, setting it up as a ratio, and then I will solve in the same exact way that I solved my previous question. I multiply the numbers that are across, 1 times 6250, gives me 6250, and then I divide by my other value, 5. See that? My numbers that are diagonal, I multiply them, then I'm going to divide by whatever number's left over the 5 in this case, and I get 12.50. So each calculator costs 12.50. All right, solving using cross, this is cross multiplying really is what it is. Um, so we're solving using cross multiplying. It's a bit of a shortcut on cross multiplying, but we're basically using cross multiplying for every type of question. And we can rewrite this one as 12.50 over 1, or in other words, 12.50 per calculator. Now, there is a shortcut for unit rate questions. Um, you might have already kind of guessed this as we were looking at it, but here's another unit rate question and I'm going to do the shortcut. If I buy an eight slice pizza for $9.84, how much does each slice cost? So I have my cost over my slices, $9.84 over eight. And instead of doing the cross multiplying with this, you can just divide the top divided by the bottom, the total amount of money divided by eight slices, and that will give you the cost for one slice. So with unit rate problems, you can set them up as ratios and solve using cross multiplying as I showed you in the previous question, or if you set it up correctly, you can just solve using division. It's a bit of a shortcut, um, and if doing this shortcut is a little overwhelming or confusing at first, you can always set up the ratios and solve using cross multiplying. You will every question you have, you can solve using cross multiplying, and and you'll get the correct answer. It's it's kind of the one stop ticket. It'll always get you the right answer. You only have to remember one method. So again, ratio problems. We use cross multiplying to see if ratios were equivalent. Then we solved equivalent ratio problems using cross multiplying, and then we did some unit rate questions using cross multiplying and also just using division. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.